Hi, and welcome to the Overcome series, where we're looking at victory over evil. My name is Pastor Chris, and I'm so glad to be introducing you to the epic story of Joseph, uh, which takes place at the end of the book of Genesis. You know, if we're really honest, life is full of suffering. Everyone from Buddha through to the Bible talks about um, the honest suffering that takes place in our world today. Even if you aren't going through pain right now, I'm pretty sure you will know someone who is. Or as psychologist Dr. Jordan Peterson says, all you have to do is wait five or 10 years and invariably you will come up with how life doesn't meet our expectations. You know, through the series, we're looking at trauma or pain or hurt and our response to it. But we're doing it from the wisdom contained in Genesis and specifically through the story of Joseph. As a pastor, I've seen the effects of trauma and how it's been handled badly. I've seen people who, through the slightest thing, maybe a girlfriend breaking up with them or failing an exam, get completely derailed in life. Simultaneously, I've seen people who've gone through the most horrific of traumas, rise above it and still use that trauma to be a blessing to other people. So this series, I'm hoping that you'll really take time to engage with it, to become more like the latter, more like a person who overcomes. As we get into the story of Joseph, you might be mistaken that this is just some kind of feel-good story that, that has Sunday school answers to everything. But you need to remember that Joseph is not a made-up story. In fact, it takes place in the context of the book of Genesis where there is so much evil taking place. Uh, there are people who, uh, you, you hear about the first murder, Cain kills his own brother. You hear about how people are cheated on and then they in turn cheat on other people. Bad things can happen and people can respond badly. That is the story of Genesis right up until we get to Joseph. In, in our home group, through the series, we're going to go through actually the story of Joseph. He has been betrayed by his brothers, right? I'm just going to do a quick summary, but you can spend time talking in your home group. He gets betrayed by his brothers, sold into slavery. Then, even as God grants him favor, he gets falsely accused by his boss and then gets put into prison. Then, as God grants him favor again, the people who are supposed to rescue him from prison forget about him. And then we get right up until the end of the story where as a result of God's promises, Joseph is now put second in charge of all of Egypt. And uh, there's famine all around the nations around Egypt. Yet Egypt under Joseph has food. And his own brothers, who the ones who betrayed him and sold him for slavery, are now coming to him and asking for help. In fact, if we're accurate, our key passage goes even further later than that. Uh, it actually comes at the end of Joseph's life when his father dies and the brothers are now worried that after Joseph has helped them out and has forgiven them and all things are good, they think, oh, maybe Joseph was just doing it because dad was alive. Dad, uh, his favorite kid was always Joseph and maybe they got something going on. But now that dad's dead, we're all dead. And Joseph answers to them an answer that he does not need to give. It gives us a clue that Joseph on the inside and the outside of his life is resolved. He's not just saying this for show. He's not just putting on an act. He really intends this. Real transformation has taken place. And it says this in Genesis 50, 19 to 20. But Joseph said to them, that's to his brothers, who are now worried for their life. Do not fear, for am I in the place of God? As for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good, to bring about that many people should be kept alive, just as they are today. So do not fear, I will provide for you and your little ones. Thus he comforted them and spoke kindly to them. Over the series, we're going to exegete the following passage. Today, we're going to look at but Joseph said to them. You see, Joseph understood what they had done. 
and he also understood what the normal response would be. That's why it says, but. He, Joseph had to, de in order for Joseph to respond the way he did, he had to grapple with never ever would he have that kind of happy family where his brothers loved him, right? Because they, they betrayed him. Maybe they're only looking out for him and asking for help now because they really need it and he's their only hope. Joseph's dream of a loving family of brothers who care for him, that was shattered a long, long time ago. And sometimes when we go through trauma, we try to pick up the pieces of our life and try to make it back the way it was. If only my dad was like somebody else's dad. If only my wife was like my best friend's wife. Or if only I didn't make this silly mistake in life, I, everything would be fine. But a good analogy for how we can deal with trauma is what's called the broken vase analogy. Where if you had a good vase and it gets shattered, instead of trying to glue all the pieces back together to make your life exactly what it was, it's possible for you to take that broken pieces and make a new mosaic, uh, a new artwork based off of the different shattered pieces. And that's what Joseph does. He takes the hurt, the evil that was done, and says, you know what? God intended something else all together. Um, I want to end with this example of pastorage. You know, we just came back from the Philippines medical mission trip. Uh, and we work with a church plant that we have over there, led by pastorage. She started that church as a result of one of the most tragic instances in her life. Uh, her, her senior pastor had um, fallen and the church was in disarray and she was in a low point in her life when she reached out to us and said, you know what, in this season, God is wanting me to do something good. And we ended up planting the church with her. Our Philippines medical mission trip began when the church began and we are now on our eighth trip. We have just come back with 50 people, medical professionals and non-medicals, and we've seen 2,500 people. So much good has come out of this one response that she has had, something new that she had never intended. I want to put it to you that this is a possibility if you will allow God to transform your life. God bless.